Jersey TV. Do you remember earlier this week I was talking to you about Bradley Shadforth, a man in Western Australia who said he had a radio station there and he was asking my permission to broadcast my shows and I said by all means yes please do it. Well we have a sister in Christ named Rhonda Buick and she's the researching type and she looked up this little town mentioned by Bradley and it was Derby Western Australia and she came back to me with a report that this was a town a population of 3,500. Now that's just a tad bigger than the town I raised my family in which was Greenwich Ohio. I think we had 2,000 souls in Greenwich Ohio but uh Derby, Western Australia, is not that much bigger, 3,500. And Rhonda said this. This is what arrested me. She said, wouldn't it be something? Or she asked in a form of a question, what if God used this radio broadcast, Bradley playing one of my shows over the air in this little town of Derby, Western Australia? What if God used that to bring the last member into the body of Christ? And my first response was, that is definitely something that God would do. It sounds to me like Derby, Western Australia, it might be Western Australia's version of Nazareth. Probably not of a great reputation, it's definitely a small town, and it would be perfect. It would be beautiful if God inspired Bradley Shadforth to broadcast these messages and the last member of the body of christ driving down a dirt road in his jeep hears his evangel for the first time says i get it and there it is the last member of the body of christ i wouldn't put it past god to do that god loves to work in strange ways as we know and he uses the humble to confound the wise Welcome to MZTV. I am Martin Zender, and we're going to close the week here talking about death again. But this this may be the last uh, segment I want to do on death. Although, I'm thinking about tackling one of the hardest passages in Scripture on Monday, and then moving on on Tuesday. i got a lot of great topics uh, coming up for, for you. I, I think of these topics while I'm, while I'm running. I have my phone in a little pouch. Speaking of Australia, you know, like a kangaroo, I have a little day glow vest and I have a pouch right here and I got my phone in there and I, oh, Romans 9.16, examine every word. I just make notes to myself. I have great topics coming up. But there's a really difficult passage in Matthew 25.41 when Jesus refers to the fire aeonian made ready for the adversary and his messengers and it sounds like there are living people sent out here and the question has been asked many times is this the lake of fire well this is a difficult passage but when have i not stormed the gates of difficult passages so i I think i might do that on monday it's exciting to me to think about it uh I, i already know what this is and i can explain it to you very simply and you will be completely satisfied when i'm finished and why would i rob you of that experience on monday so maybe monday will be the last day for now on the topic of death. But in the meantime, this is Joe Monaco Day. Joe Monaco, I don't think I've ever met this person. Nice guy. He made a comment on MCTV 1565. That's the show that was titled Death is Not a Transition from Death. And I have read a comment from our other new friend, Nathan Tittle. From this show, and it it was in this same show that Joe Monaco made the following comment. Now, I want to give Joe a lot of credit here because he is clearly indicating that what he's saying about death here is his thoughts, his opinion, what he thinks about it. And I really appreciate that. It's like he it's, he's explaining the way he was. He used to think about death the way he's probably currently thinking about death, but I can tell he's like offering it up. To me for comment which i appreciate and he ends this post very nicely 
He says, anyway, good video, Martin. You always give me something to think about. So I appreciate that, brother, a lot. And I'm going to use this as a teaching opportunity. I'm going to gently correct some things you say here. And again, to your credit, you don't use words like, thus say it the Lord. You say, I, I think this is the way it is. I've been taught this. And so, again, a great teaching opportunity. So Joe begins this way. I don't think death means we no longer exist. It seems to me that the Bible teaches the body of the dead goes back to the dust where it came from and the spirit goes back to God where it came from in an unconscious sleep state awaiting the resurrection. You can't resurrect something that doesn't exist. That's the first paragraph. We have four paragraphs here, but let me address this. I don't think death means we no longer exist. Well, death literally means, what does death actually mean? It means the absence of life. And if there is no life, then the person no longer exists. The body might exist. In fact, it does. It's sitting in the coffin in many cases at the funeral home. There's the body. It exists. Where's the spirit? As Joe rightly says, spirit returns to God. But where is the person? The person is dead. The person is said to be where the body is. The body is in the death state, therefore the person is in the death state. And But the question remains, I'm not saying I've proven it yet, but do people exist in the death state. Now, th this is tricky because as soon as you start talking about existing in the death state, uh, you come very close to skirting the concept, the theory, the really horrible teaching, the satanic teaching. I'm not saying Joe's teaching this, not at all, but you get close to thinking that the dead are alive, that they're in some other state. It's much safer to say they no longer exist than to say, well, they do exist, they're just not alive. But that's kind of tricky, isn't it? We need to stick with scriptural language. That's the only safe course for discovering what God has to say about that is to stick with scriptural phrases, scriptural words, sound words, correctly cut. It seems to me that the Bible teaches the body of the dead goes back to the dust where it came and the spirit goes back to God. Right on. You're co completely correct about that. But this is where it goes off. The dead go back to dust. The spirit goes back to God where it came from in an unconscious sleep state awaiting the resurrection. No, there is no consciousness associated with the spirit. The spirit is the life force from God that makes someone alive. And when God removes that spirit, that someone is dead. And there is no such thing as that spirit being an unconscious sleep state. Spirit is the power of God. It is not a state. It's the power of God. I'll say it again. Spirit is the power of God. It is not a state. And you can't say of the spirit of God that it is either conscious or unconscious. These are terms that can only refer to the soul. What is the soul? The soul is the product of the spirit and the body. When God breathed into Adam, Adam became a living soul. The breath of God is analogous of the spirit. God breathed the spirit of life into the nostrils of Adam. And at that time, Adam was an inert being on the ground, no life. And Adam became a living soul. So whenever we're talking about consciousness and unconsciousness, we're not talking about the spirit. We're talking about the soul. And no one literally is awaiting the resurrection. No one in the death state is awaiting the resurrection. I hate to even use the phrase the death state. That's not a scriptural term. I just want to say death. Because, again, the death state suggests that a person is in just another realm. They're in a different state. It's the dead death state as opposed to the life state. And then Joe says, you can't resurrect something that doesn't exist. Well, 
I would really hesitate to put the word can't next to the word God. He doesn't use God here. He says, you, you can't resurrect something that doesn't exist, but I, I know he means God. So I would read it as God can't resurrect something that doesn't exist. But again, I would hesitate to put can't next to God. Let's go on. We're going to get further information. The Bible seems to call the death state as sleep, not non-existence. Well, sleep is an analogy. Death is not literally sleep. Jesus used sleep as an analogy to describe Lazarus. When Jesus was with his disciples, it was reported from Martha and Mary that Lazarus was sick. Jesus said, he's asleep. And they said, well, what's the... What's the big rush? What's the concern? We don't need to go back. He'll wake up. And Jesus said, no, he's dead. So right there, Jesus is using a figure of speech, sleep, to describe death, even though sleep is not death and death is not sleep. It's a metaphor. So the death state is not sleep. And I will just tell you now, my, my belief on the matter is that death is non-existence the assumption here and i'm going to get to this is that god has to resurrect the same body that went into the tomb or went into the grave god does not have to resurrect the same body i think this is joe's hang up here he, he's he's assuming this that in order to raise a body the body has to exist how can you raise something that doesn't exist and there are instances in the past such as lazarus where the same body that went into the tomb, came out of the tomb. Maybe a little worse for wear, but it was the same body. And our Lord's body, after three days, came out of the tomb. It was the same body he went in with because it had his same crucifixion marks. But some bodies, we know, are completely destroyed. Some bodies are burned. And that, that's the most extreme example when people are cremated, for instance. Their, their bodies are destroyed. I know that there's no such thing as energy loss. I mean, I don't know the terms that would be used by, I don't know the terms of, of physics that describe that, but God knows where the various parts of that body were. There's no such thing as matter that no longer exists. It just is, exists in another form. So God could take wherever that body disappears in smoke, let's say. A cremated body disappears in smoke, let's say. And the smoke contains particles of that human body. And those particles are dispersed throughout the atmosphere. And who knows where they go after that. Likewise, a human body can be dumped into the ocean and it's eaten by fish it's completely consumed each fish has a little part of that body but then the fish poops and part of the body goes so who could keep track of all that where is could we theoretically could god theoretically bring back every single little part follow that fish grab his piece of poop grab that fish's piece of poop bring it together and bring the actual body back. Yes, of course God could, but it is absolutely not necessary. And in most cases, it is not what God is doing because it's not what God will do because our identity is not in our bodies. A body is like your computer casing. What's important with a computer is the hard drive. The hard drive has all the information about you. And as long as you have the hard drive, you can put that hard drive into any computer. It doesn't matter. You can put it into a supercomputer. You can put it into a Windows computer. You can put it into a MacBook Pro. You can put it onto a phone. The physical structure that the hard drive goes into doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. So God does not need to raise the same body that went to the tomb. That's why... Somebody that no longer exists. We can't think of that person in terms of the body. We must think of them in terms of the spirit. Now this is where it gets tricky. Because are our spirits individual spirits? 
In other words, is it the spirit of Martin here, the spirit of Rhonda here, the spirit of Bradley here? Or is spirit just a general power source of God, like a vast cauldron of spirit, and God just takes any takes any handful of spirit and puts it into the new body, and that person revives. That person will revive. No, no question about that. That God has us stored somewhere. The dead are somehow their personalities, who they are, all their experiences in life are stored. But scripture doesn't say how or where. So let us say, and I think this is fine to say this, let us say that it is stored in, in the spirit. But the spirit, again, there's no consciousness associated with the spirit. Let's think of spirit as God's power to make alive. And let's just say, I don't know this for sure, but it's an interesting thing to entertain here. And I'm thinking of one passage in Scripture. I've mentioned this before where a girl had died and Jesus brought her back to life. And the Scripture says, and her spirit returned to her. Her spirit returned to her. That's a very interesting language. Is that a figure of speech? Well, literal, if possible. Is it possible that her identity, the hard drive of her life was in the spirit? Of course, yes, it is. It is possible. In which case, God has a bunch of shelves or a bunch of computer folders on his desktop with everyone's spirit there. And that's, that's your life. That's where everything is recorded. And it can go into any body. That is any computer, any physical machine that is able to read the hard drive. And then the resultant picture and the sound, that's the soul. The Bible seems to call the death state as sleep, not non-existence. But again, it doesn't call the death state sleep. Sleep is used as an analogy of death, as a metaphor of death. If we no longer existed, when we die, we couldn't be resurrected. I believe we no longer exist. We, the people, we, the person, does not exist. We do not exist. The person does not exist. Otherwise, they would exist. Which is not to say they're not stored. No, that's wrong. Which is not to say the information is not stored somewhere. And maybe this is what Joe means. The hard drive of people's life exists. But that's a little different than saying the person exists. That's very dangerous language. I want to stay away from that. that the person exists. Death is non-life it is non-existence but again don't panic anybody it doesn't mean god doesn't have the information of that individual life and at any time he can put it into a body plug in the power and boom there's the monitor the screen lights up there's sound there's light and the person is conscious and becomes then a living soul so if we no longer existed, I'm quoting Joe again when we die we couldn't be resurrected we would have to be recreated or created all over again because now we stopped existing. Well, yes, I see no problem with that, with being recreated again. I, that ties in to what I was saying about God doesn't need to put a spirit into the same body. He can take a completely different body that looks nothing like your body. It contains no original parts. Our new bodies will probably, unless it, we're going to be the exception, our bodies are going to be changed while we're alive, so we could be using the same parts. But for the majority of people who have died, when they get their new bodies, I believe it is not necessary at all to have all original parts. In fact, you have no original parts. You don't have to. God doesn't have to gather the fragments of the human, the original human bodies. Uh, that, that, would be, uh, that would demonstrate some kind of weakness of God that he has I have to have, I gotta find everything. Why did that fish go away so fast? I gotta go find his poop. So there's part of Joe in there. I gotta get that because I got everything else. I'm just missing one piece. So frustrating. It's like when you're working a jigsaw puzzle and you got the last piece and you can't find it. No. No, God doesn't need to do that. He might do it, but I doubt it. But now I'm just giving you my opinion. But we would. Joe assumes that we would have to be recreated. Or Joe is saying here that he doubts that we would 
we could possibly be recreated. Oh, but we can. But we are not recreated. Let me put it that we are not, but the body is, a body is recreated. We are reinserted into the body. It seems to me the very term resurrected would, by definition, apply to something that already exists. Again, this is a continual theme here in this post, that resurrection, you can't resurrect something that doesn't already exist. But you can. That's the wonder of it. That's the, quote, magic of resurrection, is that you're bringing to life something that doesn't now exist. If it existed already, then it's like God would be halfway home. It would be a crutch. God would be saying, like, well, it can only resurrect it if it exists somewhere. He can't bring it out of nothing. But he does bring it out of nothing. Evidence, the creation. By the Spirit of God, things came into existence that did not exist before. The earth did not exist somewhere before. God brought it into existence. The sun, the stars, the moon brought them all into existence with a word. Things that did not exist suddenly did exist. And the same with death. People that do not now exist suddenly do exist. Because God has put the Spirit and I will even say that person's spirit back into a body, any body. And then that body becomes that person's new body. Not a renewed body, not necessarily a renewed body, but Lazarus had a renewed body. But many of the dead in Christ have been dead for thousands of years. Many of the bodies have been burned, dumped at sea, destroyed, obliterated. It can be anybody. But once that spirit of that person inhabits that body, then it's that person again. It seems to show that the term resurrected would by definition apply to something that already exists, but in a sleep-death state and not in a non-existent state. Because he, he says this again, you can't resurrect something that doesn't exist. But God can. And he will. My thought is, the resurrection is God putting the sleep state spirit that is with him back into our new incorruptible bodies which will live again. Okay, let's slow this down a little bit. My thought is, the resurrection is God putting the sleep state spirit that is with him back. There's part of this, this is true. God does put the spirit back. The terminology I object to here is the sleep state spirit. It's not the spirit that's asleep. The person is asleep. Metaphorically asleep, not literally asleep. Because obviously when you take a nap or when you sleep at night, you're the same person when you wake up and your body is the same. Death is analogous to sleep, but it is not the same. And I would say that that leans toward my thought here that that um, in order to differentiate literal sleep from metaphoric sleep, one way to differentiate it is that when you wake up from a night's sleep, you still exist. But when you die in your sleep, you don't wake up. That is, you don't exist. I think that analogy actually, when you compare figurative sleep to literal sleep, uh, then I think it's easier to see that we're speaking of non-existence here. So God puts them back together, but this time in an incorruptible state, yes, which will live forever. Yes, right on, Joe. So it would seem death is when the body and spirit are separated. Yes, which means there is no life. Yes, and life is when our body and spirit are put back together. Yes, every single thing he said there, right on. Death is when body and spirit are separated. Check which means there is no life, check. And life is when our body and spirit are put back together, check. And I would say that the intervening time period would be non-existence. And again, I think it just shows more the power of God to say that these that people don't exist in death. It just shows more the power of God. Like when he formed the earth that did not exist until it existed. He didn't need to take something that already existed and create it because obviously you can't create. Listen to this. How about this? You can't create something that exists. So God is creating new bodies. 
He's not recreating people. He's cre we're a new creation. Think of that term also. We're a new creation. I think that also suggests non-existence at death. Last paragraph. Similarly, when my car's battery dies, the car has no life. Nothing works. It is completely dead and can't do a thing. Nothing works. The electronics don't work. It won't run. The radio won't work. Oh, the radio doesn't work. That would be... That would be deadly indeed for Bradley Shatforth. Everyone's radio needs to work in Derby, Western Australia, population 3,500, in order for the last member of the body of Christ to hear the message of the evangel. So let's hope this analogy, let's hope that this is not happening in Derby, Western Australia right now. So nothing works. Electronics, no, won't run. The radio won't work it's dead but it still exists in this example yes and he says later yeah i know this is just an example it's not perfect understood but i think this suggests you're thinking that we somehow have to be restored to our original bodies you see because the car still exists it just needs to be resurrected so to speak by reuniting it with a new battery in this case it's not a bad analogy. The new battery will be the spirit, and it brings this old car that exists to life. But again, this suggests that in Job's mind, we have to be reunited with our original bodies. Maybe that's the whole essence of this thing here. That we have to be re reunited with our old bodies, and those bodies exist even though in tiny, minute pieces, pieces of matter Matter never disappears. It just assumes different forms, right? That's what I was trying to say earlier. But again, that in most cases, I would say God does not do that. We are recreated. New bodies. We're a new creation. This smacks more like Israel that are regenerated. They're redeemed, reformed. Re, re, re. We're a new creation. It's completely different. Joe says, this isn't a perfect example, but you know what I mean. Yes, I do. And uh, Joe, I appreciate your posting this for the saints. You, you, you labored over this. You have some great points. You do have an understanding of death, that it is the separation of the spirit from the body. And the only issue here is do the dead exist? And I think it's very dangerous to suggest that the dead do exist because even though you're not seeing it, you're not, you're not seeing it this way, Joe, I understand that completely. You're not saying that the dead exist consciously. You're just saying that there's something remaining. And it seems to me your idea is there's something physical remaining of the person. Otherwise, God can't resurrect something that doesn't exist. But I think when we look at the miracle of creation, of bringing something that didn't exist into existence, I think this amplifies the power of the resurrection. And when I think about it now, even resurrection is a figure of speech because you're not resurrecting the body necessarily that went into the ground or went into the tomb. But it speaks of resurrecting it I think that term speaks more of resurrecting the person. The person is resurrected. The person is the same person. The same person that died comes out of death. But that person can come in a completely new body that never existed before. And this, I'm looking at my time, I have to stop talking. I would love to keep talking, but I have to stop right now. This the non-existence of the dead to me just amplifies the power of the Spirit of God in bringing life, bringing existence to non-existing things.